I think there's three uh, three levels of things happening right now in the pandemic. Uh, the first one is meeting the immediate survival needs of the population that is hit so hard by the pandemic and its ripple effects economically on the workforce and so on. So people are uh, huge, millions of people are worried about not five years from now, but two weeks from now. Are they gonna have a roof? Can they get a roof if they don't have one? Can they find shelter, food? What about their families? All of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are struggles breaking out, some of which have organizers connected to them, and many of which are spontaneous, people who've never participated in politics. So there's a whole range of struggles on that level that include some mutual aid things, not ones that are just like we're going to go off and save ourselves, but are people banding together to take care of one another, people uh, walking out of a McDonald's, people going on a rent strike where they are, uh, prisoners, disabled people, uh, all the inequalities in the most vulnerable sectors. This is all going on. So one thing is to connect with those. People connecting with those and being there with others as they struggle. Mm -hmm. That then gets connected to what I think is the next level, which is the struggle to understand why the pandemic is having the effect it has and how that translates into American politics. So that's the struggle over the narrative. Is it the China virus or is it the problem that this country does not have a decent public health system, does not have the kind of system where if people lose their jobs, they're protected until the economy recovers, all exacerbated by the eight weeks that Trump administration stonewalled and did absolutely nothing to, to take precautions. The United States is number one in the worst handling of this crisis relative to its wealth of any country in the world. That's what number one is. So that level is a battle over narrative and it's a battle over protecting the election. It's a battle over engaging people in that level of politics. And then the third level is our visionary demands for a very thorough restructuring, uh, going back to the first things that Margot said about the structures of this country and the deep layers of inequality and racial capitalism, gendered capitalism, and all the other things that are interconnected. Okay. The strategic trick is to bridge those layers. Um, how do you engage in the first and keep a connection to the battle over the narrative and politics and to long range structural change. Bernie's done a good job, I think on that, but his voice will be a little muted now that he's dropped out. Uh, I wrote my last column for Organizing Upgrade about the People's Bailout Initiative, which has five principles which provide a bridge between those immediate struggles. And now I think 800 organizations have signed on to those principles, all the way from uh, groups like the Indigenous Environmental Network, which is one of the initiators, all the way to daily costs, move on. So there's a broad front around that. Uh, the Wisconsin situation has created an a wake up call for people about voter protection, voting rights. Uh, Stacey Abrams has been in on that. There's a whole range of grassroots groups. So I think linking those levels and DSA, again, uh, you have a, such a large organization, people looking for things to do, a highly motivated membership, and many people in DSA are more flexible in what they can do in their political work right now than a lot of other folks. So they're in a situation like this, an organization has to be nimble. You can't just keep doing what you were doing before. You have to be willing to shift around priorities.